Hi friends, today's the Saturday the 22nd of April 2023 and I am right outside of Mechanicsville, Virginia, the place called Cold Harbor. So we are on a walk of the battlefield today. And I am right outside of Mechanicsville, Virginia, the place called Cold Harbor. And I'm in the middle of the, uh, it's kind of a national park here, a cemetery, and uh, an old home here that we're going to take a peek at in just a minute. But in the summer of 1864, a number of battles took place all around this area. And the cemetery that we're going to visit is the, the Cold Harbor National Cemetery. Um, home to about 2,100 or so Union soldiers. Um, no Confederates in this one, just so Union soldiers. But uh, <clears throat> there's one notable burial here, Sergeant Augustus Berry, Sergeant Major Augustus Berry, and he was a uh, Medal of Honor winner in the Civil War. So right now we are at the Garth Wright house. I'm going to turn the camera around just a moment here, but this house was used as a field hospital by the Union soldiers um, for during most of this battle. So we'll take a peek at that, and then we're going to take a walk across the road and have a look in the cemetery. So let's see what's here together. So this is the Garth Wright house. <clears throat> um, not sure you know who maintains this. Let's see. Let's take a look at the sign here. The Garth Wright House stood in the path of charging troops at two battles, Gaines Mill in 1862 and Cold Harbor in 1864. The house belonged to Miles, Miles Garth Wright, a Confederate soldier whose cavalry unit, cavalry unit saw action around Cold Harbor early in the battle. Portions of the building might have been 100 years old by the time of the Civil War, and the nearby enclosed brick cemetery dates from the middle of the 1700s, if not earlier. Oh, pretty cool. Did not know this place had its own cemetery, but that's what it would have looked like in 1887, right there. And right over there would be the cemetery that they're talking about in the sign here. Ah, I see at least 97 soldiers died from their wounds here and received temporary burial in the front yard. Two years later, the Cold Harbor National Cemetery opened across the road and work crews reburied all of the Union dead there. So let's have a look at the Garth Wright house here. Kind of looks like this house was added onto at one point or maybe multiple points in its history. You see how odd the, the brick section here looks. And then you've got the section with the siding on it. It's very odd looking. I don't think that was here in the Civil War. Probably keeps it nice inside though. All seems to be closed up today though, so we can't go inside, but that is the Garth Wright house. Now let's have a look at the cemetery on the property here, see if there's any marked stones inside. Does not appear to be any stones 
in here at all. Let's take a look from the end. The ground does show some some divoting, some ripples, some depressions, but no marked stones, what's, not even any field stones. There are no stones in here whatsoever. So obviously a tilled farm field out here. But Garth Wright House and the private cemetery on the property. Completely unmarked. So as I was walking out of the area, I came across this little sign here that I didn't see earlier talking about the family cemetery right there. Near Cold Harbor stands the house where my father was born and not far from the house there is a graveyard surrounded by a brick wall. There sleep the generations of my forefathers. In that enclosure is buried Mr. James Hooper. That's Dr. Thomas Hooper, 1895. James Hooper died in 1754. Following the Hoopers, the old farmhouse and surrounding fields were home to the Garth Wrights during the Civil War and the McGees in later years. Members of both families probably are buried in this cemetery. After the battles in 1862 and 1864, numerous Union soldiers were interred haphazardly on the property. In 1866, most of their remains were recovered and removed to the military cemetery across the street. It is unknown whether any soldiers are still buried here in the family cemetery. So as we approach the cemetery here, the, uh, the lodge in the place was designed by a man named Montgomery Meigs. I do not know what year it was put in place here, but I will find out and plug that into the video when I'm editing. What I do know is that it's two stories with a basement. I know that much about it. That's it. So let's take a peek here at the front. Veterans Administration, 1930. Cold Harbor National Cemetery. So as I said earlier, roughly 2,100 plus a couple more, 2,110, 2,111, something like that. Soldiers buried here. And there are a couple of different monuments placed here. We'll take a peek at those. It looks very similar to Arlington National Cemetery with all the neat rows, very uniform military burials. So this is the Pennsylvania Artillery Regiment, light batteries, B and F, second heavy, second provisional heavy. That thing's probably 40 feet tall. Pennsylvania Cavalry Regiments. Erected by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to all Pennsylvania regiments which participated in the operations from May 31 to June 12, 1864. Incident 2 and during the Battle of Cold Harbor, Virginia, June 1 to 3, 1864. I believe this was placed in 1909. I'm not mistaken. Here is one who was not from the Civil War. Actually, there's a few here. William Marion, U.S. Air Force, Korea, died in 1980. William Shepard, Korea, died in 1980. Alvin Crane, World War II, died in 1980. And Joseph Anderson, World War II died in 1980 again.
So there's kind of a row of, if you look back here, this, this row straight back this way is very different looking than these others. These are, these all must be civil war right here. Um, but these are more modern, closer to, closer to modern times. Let's take a look at the New York monument that is here. This is the New York monument. This one's much shorter than the other. This is probably 15 feet high or so, 12 to 15 feet. 8th New York Heavy Artillery, Colonel Peter Porter, 4th Brigade, 2nd Division, 2nd Corps, Army of the Potomac. And then a roll of all the soldiers' names. Uh, and again, I believe this was placed in 1909. Could be wrong on that. one out here in the middle that looks kind of like a cannon. I believe that is a cannon. Ah, oh, very ornate here. United States National Military Cemetery, Cold Harbor, established April 30th, 1866. Interments, 1952. Known, 673 an unknown is interesting looks like a water fountain I wonder if it still works no it doesn't work all right this last monument is to the unknowns this one was erected by the government in 1877 commemorating the 889 unknown Union soldiers buried in two trench graves at the back of the cemetery. Near this stone rest the remains of 889 Union soldiers gathered from the battlefields of Mechanicsville, Savage Station, Gaines Mills, and the vicinity of Cold Harbor. And my guess is that's probably a trench grave going out that way and again going out that way. Erected by Congress in the year of our Lord 1877 and in the 101st year of the independence of the United States of America. Very interesting. Yes, I believe that says unknown right there. I believe it does. Probably a tool shed here. Well, let's see if we can take a peek inside. I 
you see American flags in there too. Ready for a Memorial Day. There's a 2008 right there. 1965. The rest of these are Civil War. Oh, I think we have a row here. Again, the, outs the outside edges appear to be more modern graves, whereas across the middle, the main open field here is all Civil War. Gertrude K. June 29, 1969, wife of Corporal H.W. Nettles, Jr., USMC. Take a peek up in this front corner here. This very low little thing up here with a locked door. Not sure what that could be. They keep tools in there. It appears to be ventilated. I wonder if that was a temporary body storage, coffin storage. See a number of unknowns, unknowns. This is section A. I believe this is where the sergeant major was buried, if I am not mistaken. Taking a peek at my notes real quick here to see if I can find him. Sergeant Major Augustus Berry. I read that he was buried in Section A, which is where we're standing right now. He was also the very first superintendent of this cemetery, and he died in 1871. And I'm looking across these stones, two unknowns right there. So far, I'm not seeing his name. Unknown U.S. soldier. Hmm. I'm not sure where section A ends and section B or whatever other section begins. It is beginning to sprinkle on my head, so I'm hoping it doesn't start pouring anytime soon. <clears throat> still looking, still looking. I hear thunder now. Aha, I just found him. Do you see him yet? Augustus Berry, Medal of Honor, Sergeant Major, 16th U.S. Infantry, 
August 3rd, 1871. And there's our Medal of Honor winner right there. Well, this is the Cold Harbor National Cemetery. Again, I'll give you a peek from side to side here. We will turn. And the lodge. There you have it. Thank you for coming on the tour with me. And until the next video, have a wonderful day.